On this episode, we finally do the jet flames. <laughs> we discuss pasta. Uh, I, I call this a wet noodle effect. And we are careful not to jump to conclusions. This immediately feels better. Hi everybody, this is Christian, this is LazyApps Academy. This is the advanced shmup tutorial. We are so advanced, numbers mean nothing. I think last time around I made a mistake about the number of episodes we are on. Quieting down. I think this is episode 8. I hope this is episode 8. <laughs> it's one of those episodes. Um, yeah. Let us load our move and see what's happening. We are able to move around with our ship. That's cool. We can also fire. That is not an awesome, not an awesome shot though. We have to, we have to do something about this shot. Uh, yeah, that's, 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 Another thing that also uh, we forgot, we didn't just forget the, the correct number of the episode last time around, we also forgot to create the jets, the actual flames coming out of the ship. That's something we didn't do. It was one of the doggy zone episodes last time around and we just didn't do it. How do you how do you put up with me? Okay, um, so yeah, let's get the chat jets in here because I mean it's 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 an important aspect of it and it's kind of like also maybe a good practice for what we're gonna do today. We're gonna do a lot of animation, and the jets are I think a kind of nice and sweet way of testing out animation. Now I'm gonna plop in some. Uh, some uh, some uh, assets and I want to if I didn't mention previously then I want to uh, remind you that anytime I'm dragging in an asset that asset will be also available down in the doobly-doo you, for you to download also you can always download the um, state of the project before the episode and after the episode again the link is going to be always down in the doobly-doo and you can use those assets to follow along as I do those things here but of course, you're always invited and encouraged to use your own assets to make this project your own. Again, something I discussed at the beginning is I think a good um, method that a lot of people, I heard from a lot of people following these tutorial series is to just work with two projects. One project is just following me, following along uh, with me, and those assets are for this. And the other project would be then doing your own stuff, replicating what I did, but then putting your own spin on it. Okay, so let us just, I have, I can drag and drop and file into, into that's something you can do in PQA. You can just drag, drag and drop in PNG, plump. And then I have my beautiful, beautiful, beautiful flame animation. And we need to get two of those flames shooting down uh, from the back of the jet. Um, how are we going to do this, oh, man? So, yeah, ah. Uh, so we could create like an array, kind of like the, sh the, the same way we create like a shots array where we create objects in there and so forth. We could create that kind of array for, um, for you know, like some doodads, some special effects and so forth. But in this case, I don't think we're gonna, I think we just really will be using just the flames. Um, I, like we're just gonna have an animation like this just for the flames. I don't think there's gonna be additional animations attached to the ship. I'm not sure if there's, maybe later on when we have a lot of different special effects, we can see if we can kind of like combine them together in kind of like a special effect system. Maybe, maybe we can solve this with particles. But this is like a very special type of effect that's attached to our sprite, to our sprite of our ship. So let's, let's just not overthink it for now and just like draw them. Let's just, just draw them. So we're going to do an SPR. Um, again, later maybe we're going to use SSPR because you can see that there's a lot of, there's a lot of, here's a lot of black that actually doesn't matter. We could just make this everything a lot more compact. Um, but we're going to care about that later. So uh, yeah, this is the sprite number 12. Let's just like make a, a non-animated sprite and position it correctly. And then later we're going to think about how to position this. So we're going to put it PX, PY. And just going to see how that looks. Okay, we have the jet there. Now we need to add, we need to position correctly. So let's add uh, 16 to the Y position, is that cool? Uh, let's make it 15 so it's a bit further up. And then on the X position, we're gonna do plus six. Uh, okay, we accidentally hit the exact position for the right jet. So we're gonna keep this around and we're gonna duplicate this. And we're gonna maybe do it like plus three. 
yeah, that looks good. Now, if you were a really cool person, and uh, maybe that's something that you can try out in Doggy Zone, you can maybe, because when the uh, ship is banking, the like visually, those two jets should align a little bit. So you could maybe animate the jets so they're kind of like moving together, moving closer together when the ship is fully banked. Uh, I I, have, I don't do not care about this that much um, about this kind of detail. I, I'm just gonna draw the line somewhere, and this is the line. I did it before. <laughs> I have to admit, I did it before, and it was a lot of work and it, like for a very small effect. So I decided like ah, let's put let's invest this energy somewhere else. Um, right. So now we need to do an animation. An animation. Um, okay, so let's let's do something like let's go let's create an array. Let's go local flame r flame array, and then just like go let's just like count the animation frames that we need. Let's start here, 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 and then back, and then here. So let's go. So this goes extends and oh, wait, do we see this? Wait, what do, oh I'm in, I'm in wrong. So it extends and retracts, extends and retracts. I want this, this kind of animation happening. So it's 12, 13, 14, 13. 12, uh, 12 13, 14, 13. Um, yeah, so now we just need to like loop through this animation. So we're gonna go loop from one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You just need a, uh, a number that cycles through these. Um, Mm -mm. Maybe this is a good moment to introduce a friend that we used before as well uh, to you introduce the t variable that I love so much, just like a counter for the individual frames. So we're going to go t equals zero. I love to do these things. Well, actually, do that. Let's do this in an init function. Let's do it in an init function. T equals zero, and then in the update sixty function, all the way at the beginning, we're going to go t plus equals one. And you know we're printing a lot of stuff onto the screen. Let us uh, clear some of that stuff. I, I'm okay printing short weight. That's okay. Uh, I want to also. Let, you know what? Let's print t at the at the top. Then let's print short weight, and then this is just going to be nothing. We can put in different values in here. Maybe you should use my debug system. That might be <laughs> might be worthwhile. But okay, let's just like, leave it for here for now so we can see what's happening. And now we can see the top value that is counting up. That's just the number of frames that are counting up. I like to have like a T variable in each of my games because um, there's a, also a different function that you can use. There's a time function, which funny enough also abbreviates to T. Um, but by using a T variable, we kind of overwrite it. it just don't don't worry about it. <laughs> um, so yeah, with the time function, that counts the number of seconds and it uses comma values. That's cool. That's also useful for certain situations where you really want to like nail down certain timing that feels right and seconds is a bit more uh, intuitive than frames. But for animations, I like frames better because I want to control exactly how many frames I'm, I'm animating something and that's difficult to do when you're measuring in seconds. Okay, so um, I have now this T variable here and then I can use this to do the animation. Well, an easy way to do this, and we already did this. You, this, is, this is old stuff, you should know this, but you know, we are warming up, we're warming up. Um, where is it, where is it, where are we doing this? There we go. Mm. So we're gonna go something like local flame, uh, flame frame or a frame, flame frame. Um, so the frame that we want to draw is gonna be T, but it's not gonna be T because T just keeps counting up. So we have to like make it <clears throat> circle around, make it go to a certain number and then reset. And that's of course the modulo, modulo four and then plus one because uh, the arrays in Lua are starting with one. So we can start at zero. We have to add always one to it. And this is gonna be a frame. And then here, and when you're drawing the sprite, we're just gonna go tuk, 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 tuk. Wait, actually, you know what? No, no, we're not gonna do it like this. I'm gonna be smarter about this. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna just dump the frame in here. And the frame is gonna be flame r square brackets. Yes. 
like so. Oh, there's a two here. Get rid of this. Let's see how that looks. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit extreme. A little bit extreme, I'd say. Uh, so how do we speed this? Uh, slow this down. Well, an easy way of doing this is divide it. Let t divided by two, and then modulo four. Um, I think this causes some troubles because this is a comma value and they don't like comma values. Something you can do is, um, well, what you actually want to do here now is maybe do a floor, so like FLR, T divided by two. Um, but there's an easy way of doing this. And recently I, I kind of like got reminded. In Pico 8, you can also do the um, backslash divide. You can, this is a normal divide, but there's also the backslash divide and the backslash, backslash divide includes a floor. So it's divide and floor at the same time. And that kind of like saves us some time. Let's see how that looks like. Yes. See? Oh, oh man, this looks good. Let's see what maybe different values look like. Just like to see. We want to see the, a wrong value. We want to see a slow. What, what looks this too slow? Yeah, see, this, is, this just look, looks choppy now. This is not cool. Um, so six is too much. What about four? I kind of like the four. What about three? Yeah, maybe three is the correct number. Okay, so this immediately looks like more alive and also more fluid because the animation has a lot of frames. So immediately I'm like, ooh, ooh, yes. Now something, uh, if you watched, um, there's an excellent video series by Barkhawk, which I already also mentioned in the Shmup Words video, I referenced the Shmup Words video. You should watch it, it's great. Something that Barkhawk said is that, you know, you have the banking animation when you're going left and right. And something that Barkhawk said is it might be also a cool idea to, to change the flames when you're going up and down. That's a cool thing to maybe to try as a doggy zone, as your own experiment, you, you go ahead. I did some experiments with that myself. I personally don't like to animate the ship when it's going up and down, not at least not in a uh, kind of like a flame going out side, uh, out in the bottom. The reason for that is I feel <laughs> when the scrolling doesn't change speed, then it doesn't actually feel like I'm going faster. So it doesn't actually make sense to me that the that the flames are getting bigger when you go up. I don't I don't think that makes sense for me. I, I it doesn't doesn't the gut feeling is not there for me. Uh, the same way you could also open up some air brakes, um, something some airplanes have like air brakes that pop out uh, to slow down. But again, I, if the scrolling speed doesn't change, then I think that that doesn't that doesn't register in my head. I don't know if um, there's some situations where you know we have shmups where there's like a cutscene and there's like flames coming down the backside and then suddenly the ship flies off and then the scrolling gets faster. That's cool. Uh, GGLS3 has this on a, in a launch sequence at the beginning. That's cool. Um, but like during movement, it, it's just distracting during the game, I feel. Banking is okay though. I, I like the banking. Now we could do this in, we could just copy this and paste it in here. I'm gonna leave it around like here because there's a good chance that we're gonna have, uh, have a different solution for all of this. So I'm just gonna leave it around for now. It's kind of like a nice compact four lines to draw the flames. It's good. Let's move on to the more important question, which is making better shots. <sighs> this doesn't look great. This is not great. Good. This is not good. Let me draw something. I wanted to draw something. Um, let's draw the number of shots that are on the screen. That's maybe something that would be nice to know in general. Um, let us, what is, what are the draw? Here we go. Um, I'm not interested in time, but I am interested in a number of shots. Number of shots. Let's label them. Shots dot dot combines two strings to each other and also maybe a variable to a string. So this is a string and with dot dot we can append something. Just a reminder, just if you're not in the so we have shots are four. <clears throat> now uh, there's a let's let's fix maybe some some problem that we haven't fixed yet, and which is like if the shots leave the screen, we want to delete them. So we're gonna go like if s uh, dot y is smaller than like minus eight, then uh, delete s from shots. 
So now we're going to go out to 10 and nothing happens. Oh, <laughs> from shots, we're going to delete S other way around. <laughs> uh, yeah, that works. So now we only have 10 shots at a, at a given point. I set minus eight and not zero because the shots have a certain height. And if you put zero in here, they delete it just a little bit too, too soon. You see how, how they just like a little bit too soon. Um, so I minus eight kind of like it makes them scroll off screen and not just like disappear once they touch the edge of the screen. Um, yeah, and what about those shots though? Um, they're not great. Let's let's maybe do the double shots and, and position them correctly. So okay. we're gonna do like just another shot here. Um, maybe plus two and this is plus six. Okay, so we now have the double shot that we are talking about, but I think it needs to be more plus eight and this is plus three maybe. Okay, this looks more correct. Um, let's go, oops, let's go plus nine. Yes. So this looks correct. Like this looks like the shots are coming from the fuselage, as I said, like you know, with those fighter jets, I think the guns are somewhere at the fuselage usually. Nah, I get from watching Top Gun. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, this this is this is weak weak sauce. And we already talked about the things that we can do to in, in, improve things. First of all, we can make faster shots. Uh, let's make faster shots. Let's try three. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, this immediately feels better. This immediately feels so much better. And I like the double shots. That's kind of like makes it feel good. Uh, we don't have a muzzle animation, so that's maybe something that we also need to uh, take into account. Um, and we don't have, well, let's, let's see. We don't have a thing that we already talked about. We don't have um, something that is kind of like a lot of shmups have, like the shot limit, to limit the number of shots that are available on the screen. So right now uh, we have like eight, maximum number of shots we can have on the screen is 10, because once they leave the screen, they get deleted. So at the current shoot frequency and the movement speed, 10 is kind of like the maximum number of shots on the screen. Uh, but we can do like introduce like a hard limit to an amount of shots that are on the screen, and that's maybe that should be good. There is advantages to, to this, and we're going to see that effect in right away. But let's introduce that right away. So if the shot weight is smaller than zero, and number of shots is smaller than, and then we can now <coughs> introduce a shot limit. So ten is we can't have more than ten shots on the screen anyway. So making anything like ten wouldn't actually change anything. Let's make it like four. So you can see now the shot frequency is really low when I'm down here on the screen. But if I go up here, I'm shooting really, really fast. And that's kind of like the effect of the shot limit. It's kind of like makes it so that going closer to things um, allows me to, to sh shoot fr more frequently and do more damage over time. And kind of like we have to figure out, you know, what's what the... Uh, uh, what a good shot limit is. And this is really depends on, uh, there's three codependent values, the shot limit, the speed of the shot, and the uh, weight between the shots. These th three things are codependent. So you have to like, when you change one of the values, you also have to keep in mind, it's kind of like in sync with the other values. So when we, if we decide we want faster shots, then suddenly that shot limit makes no sense. We have to also adjust the shot limit. This makes playing around this a little bit fiddly. Something we want to maybe add here is maybe a local shot speed. We're gonna add a speed here. Uh, let's go to minus three. So we can control the speed with single value. Um, so for example, if you want, let's say you want slower shots. See, now the speed limit six makes no sense because uh, shot limit six makes no sense because then we're really hampering down. What if we want to have um, the shot weight is gonna be slower. Let's, let's put the shot weight actually here up here. So they're both close together. So we can all, all three values are close to each other physically. So now when it's, we, we have like these small bursts, but then we stop shooting immediately. So maybe we're gonna go, gonna go 10. Yeah, let's go 10, see now. Maybe now in this case we need 20, you know? Yeah, now that feels good. 
But you know what? Uh, again, the speed is just too slow and it's kind of like hard to find what's the right speed, you know? Um, something that's worth, um, something that's a really bad effect is when you shoot something and you're actually faster than your own shots. That's bad. <laughs> That's bad. You don't do this. Um, let's, let's, let's just remove the shot limit for now. Um, and even if you say like, okay, the shot, we make faster shots, right? And we make the weight really low. Even this, you know, now we're shooting a lot of bullets. That's cool. But you see how, how we're like, we have like this noodle, like this noodle behavior. The shots are lagging behind our left and right movement. Even when there's like a continuous stream happening, this feels a little bit like uh, I, I call this a wet noodle effect. Um, and it's pronounced the slower the shots are, more pronounced the slower the shots are. So like this is even more pronounced now, right? The wet noodle effect. <laughs> it doesn't feel like there is a force behind the shots. It feels like they're just coming out in this limp, like, you know, powerless fashion. It feels like a wet noodle. And if we increase the speed, then uh, the, that shot becomes a lot firmer and it looks like there's more force behind behind the shot. It looks like it's, you know, it like a, a like a garden hose, you know, where the, where the water is coming out. When the pressure is really high, you get like this very stiff stream. And when it's really low, it's like <laughs> so, um So this looks like, you know, yeah, just like, turn up the the water pressure and then you just you, like a like a high pressure water um cleaner thing you know it's just like this very stiff uh, stream coming out and that's kind of like something that we're chasing we're chasing like satisfying feeling of uh, of the pressure washer thing where it's like you just you know clean away all the enemies that's kind of like my ideas here but you know this is also a situation where it's also worth looking at other games and you know, compare notes and see like, okay, we maybe have some gut feeling of what numbers feel right, but let's see what other games did. Yes, this is the moment to get out my beautiful, beautiful spreadsheet. I've been doing some research. This is important stuff. This is the, the stuff I care about. So I looked just at, at a couple of shmups to kind of like get like a sanity check, get like ideas of what the speeds are that those games operate. And so this is, uh, I did a lot, of, I checked out the ships in Northern Pachi. I actually checked the shot and the beam, the focus shot, that's the beam. Um, I checked Raiden, DJLS3, Barish Fantasia, and uh, Crimson Clover. And the numbers I'm getting here, again, I'm, I just um, counted how many frames it took for a bullet to, uh, you know, when you're at the very bottom of the screen and you shoot the bullet, how many frames does it take to for the bullet to travel all the way from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen? Um, and that kind of like removes the problem of trying to, you know, take into account the resolution. And then I'm using uh, this equivalent speed equation. I'm just like saying, okay, uh, if assuming our screen was 112 pixels high as it is in Pico 8. Like it's 128, but I'm subtracting some pixels to account for the sprite of the of the ship. So assuming this is, was the height of our screen, how many? Uh, what is what would the per frame pixel speed to do this thing in Pico 8? How fast would our bullet has to have to travel to uh, to go, get from the ship all the way to the top of the screen in in these times? And the numbers I'm getting here are crazy. So you saw that like, we tried like three, four. No, dude, seven. Dodon Pachi has seven, six here, you know, four. Like four, that's very slow, actually, very bearish Fenty Asia. Ra Raiden is, is 3.5, which is incredibly slow compared, like it's the slowest value on this, this thing, but it's also like, that's the, the biggest, one of the biggest values that we tested so far. And it's kind of like good to do these kinds of tests to see like, oh, actually we're way off base and it's fine to go up to seven or something. Uh, so one thing to keep in mind is these are um, Tate um, shmups. So they have um, um, narrow and long, like very tall screens, right? And we have a more squarish screen. And so like maybe seven is a bit too big, let's, but let's try values around that. Uh, by the way, something I also did here is also to have some notes um, about the muzzle flash. 
um, and you know things that I noticed. Like once you start, you know, looking at the individual frames of all the animations, you start discovering amazing stuff. And I would definitely recommend you go through this process as well, um, checking some other shmups. And let me know in the comment section what kind of values you arrived at with those other shmups. It would be nice to expand this in the uh, uh, with with you know with more data. So yeah, in the comment section or ideally in the uh, shmup channel on Discord. Link in the description. Right, so yeah, shot speed four is too slow. Let's go with seven. Ooh, yeah, okay, that's a very stiff stream. But you notice something that is odd. It looks like the shots are not moving anymore. Isn't that weird? The shots are no longer moving, they just hover. Like if I look like this, it looks like I just created a bunch of copies of that um, of that uh, sprite. It looks like it's not moving anymore. What gives? Yes, so let me, future Christian, break down the problem real quick. There are actually two effects that we need to address. First one is the one we just saw. It looks like if the bullets are not really moving, this is what is called the stroboscoping effect or more widely known as the wagon wheel effect. The name comes from old Western movies that featured wagons and stagecoaches with those big wheels with clearly visible spokes. Sometimes in those movies, it would look as if the wheels are turning slower than they should be or even stop altogether or even start turning backwards. This is due to how the rotation of the wheels in a number of spokes synchronized with the movie's frame rate. The same effect can sometimes result in videos of flying helicopters that look as if their blades aren't really moving. Creepy. We see a similar effect here and it will always happen as you increase the shooting frequency. As the shooting frequency approaches the frame rate, the bullets appear to be moving slower and slower. By the time we're shooting a new bullet every frame, the bullet stream appears to be entirely static. This is because the frames we are actually rendering are effectively identical. Now, the bullets themselves are actually moving. You can see here we, I marked the bullet and it's actually traveling up. But because we fire a new bullet every frame and the bullets look all the same and follow all exactly the same trajectory, we end up rendering the same image over and over again and we completely lose the sense of motion. Now, there are many ways to break up the effect. One general rule of thumb is to fire at a minimum of frequency of every three frames. This leaves enough spacing between the bullets to break up the illusion somewhat. Another method is to introduce variation to the bullets. In this example, some bullets we fire have a different color and the motion becomes apparent again. This is why it may be a good idea to actually animate the bullet sprite. We will look into that in a second. However, something you might notice is that if we reduce the firing frequency to every two or three frames, we do reduce the wagon wheel effect, but we introduce a second effect. Now it appears as if the bullets are flickering or strobing. This adds a lot of visual noise to the point where it can be even hard to look at the screen. The strobing effect comes from the fact that the bullets are moving too fast for the eye to properly register the motion. When we are looking at an animation, all we really see is just a sequence of images and it is up to our brain to associate the objects on one image with the objects on the next one. This is an easy task if the objects are moving slowly. The illusion of motion is easily to maintain. As the objects increase speed, the differences between the frames become more extreme. Eventually the illusion of motion breaks down into meaningless flicker. In order to bring back the sense of motion, we need to give our brains more clues about how objects between frames are related. One good solution is to stretch the objects out along the axis of motion. It is difficult to follow a small dot moving across the screen. It is much easier to follow a long line moving at the same speed. With the line, the image of the object on the individual frames actually physically overlaps, so our brains have an easier time to keep track of it. So these are the two effects we are up against, the wagon wheel effect and the strobing. But why are we even struggling with this? Well, because we kept increasing the speed of the bullets and the shooting frequency until we ran up against the limitations of the technology and the limits of human perception. Next up, past Christian will take over and will attempt to deal with those effects and restore that sense of fast motion we are looking for. Okay, so let me bring in, in a bullet animation. I'm gonna explain you what happens. This is a bullet animation this year. 
This is a bullet animation inspired by um, by Dodon Pachi. And I noticed something that is very interesting. First of all, the bullet was gigantic. <laughs> it is as tall as the entire ship. That it's it's I was I was way off. <laughs> I thought this was the a good shot for my ship because it's already bigger than a bullet. Like that's the way you think, you know. You oh, I want to create a bullet. Like the bullet is just so much smaller than a ship because it's just like the tiny chunk of metal in the sh the spaceship or the, the the jet is just like this huge machine, right? And it just it's firing these little little bullets. I guess I make it, you know, oversize it, so I make it, you know, as big as some a barrel or something, you know, as a, as the pilot. Maybe the pilot would be the size and on the scale. But no, <laughs> we need to go bigger than that. We need to make it like as big as your spaceship. Is what I'm saying. And then I noticed something that that was was also interesting. They are very elongated. They are very long compared to their width. They're still pretty wide, but especially long. They have like this very long shape. And another thing is that they're actually animated. The bullets are have actually animations in there. That's actually a smart trick. And we're gonna see how these tricks, these effects contribute to make the bullets feel, like it allows us to track the motion of the bullet and also reduce the strobing. Okay, so first let us try to get this bullet into our animation, into our program. Now, I kind of want to keep this around because that's kind of like a nice tool to be able to switch between the diff different shots to compare them. So let us create a system where we can switch between different shots and we can design different shots and see you know, which shots um, we like better. So let us do something like, let us um, create a weapon switcher. So they'll, they'll go like weapon equals one. And then when you press shot, uh, where do we do update? Update 60, there we go. Um, okay, so here's where here's the code that actually fires our bullets. And here we can do like a switch. If web equals one, then else if web equals two, then. And then we're gonna call this like shot riden. And then shot uh, DDP. The run patch. And we're gonna create a new tab. We're gonna go function shot underscore riden. Function shot equals DDP, uh, underscore DDP. Okay, and then let's get this, all this stuff out here. And that is gonna be the shot riden. Uh, fixing the indentation, that's so important. Hopefully you <laughs> you have mastered the technique of indentation now. And yeah, this will be the shop DTP, which has not been programmed yet. So let us try this. So yeah, this is the Raiden stop. This is making actually, let's just actually make it like Raiden. Um, so let us add uh, let us add a short limit to this. Let's just make it six. Raiden was like 3.5, the speed was 3.5. Let's, let's see how that looks like. Yeah, that see, I, we're getting like the the pea shooter effect from Raiden, where the shots are kind of like a bit limp. Uh, you can see that in wet noodle effect definitely when you're going right, but you know when we're not firing that many shots, it's, it, it, you don't really feel that, and it's just like it's just like a bit lackluster. You can definitely track the bullets though; that's good, and there is no strobing happening, so there's a certain advantages to for solutions like this. But yeah, this doesn't feel like you're powered uh, up. And in Raiden is a game where you then gradually power up your shot and this feels like, you know, the shot that you start up with, <laughs> that you feel underpowered and you want to upgrade. Okay, so let us try um, to add the Doronpachi thing. So let's change, switch to sh uh, sh weapon number two. And if we run this, nothing happens because we haven't programmed anything because the Doronpachi, um, function is empty. Let us copy the stuff from Raiden, but change some things. Okay, so now we want to maybe have a different sprite. So um, let us add a function called S. Yeah, S. And for the uh, Raiden bullets, um, we, the S was 11. And for the Duranpachi bullets, the S is, well, we're gonna have the whole animation here, right? 
Um, but for now, let us just include a single a single frame. Let's just use this uh, it's a 32. Uh, that doesn't work because we are not actually pay, pay, um, when we're drawing the, the shots, we are all, um, we're defaulting to 11, but now we're going to take the SS, so uh, shot and sprite, as for sprite. Okay, we're shooting the Dodonpachi bullets, but they are now obviously too big. Um, so maybe we need also have a SH shot height. We're going to set it to two. Uh, shot height set to two. And here for Raiden, we're going to set shot height to one. Shot height to one. Okay, okay. And we, by the way, we immediately like there's a lot of, a lot of numbers we have to juggle to if we just change the size of, of our sprite a little bit. We we're gonna have to find a better solution for this. But for now, that's okay. Um, so yeah, let's plug them in here. So we're gonna go sh uh, one for the width, uh, but s dot short height for the height. Uh, dot short height for the height. So the next param parameter in the sprite function is the width in, in tiles. That's one, that's always one, that's okay. Maybe we're gonna have wider shots later on. I'm gonna deal with that later. Uh, and the next parameter is the height of the sh sprite we're drawing in tiles. Uh, and so usually it's one, but for the Dodon Pachi it's two. And immediately, immediately it feels like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's go, baby. <laughs> um, but let us, the, now the spacing is quite, kind of a little bit off. Uh, that's because this shot was, you know, the center of the shot is here, around here, but the center of this shot is here. So we need to move things a little bit to the sides. So let us fix the, the spacing. Uh, let us do something like mm, plus one, Let's just see how that looks. Yeah, it feels like it feels like the other one should be a bit closer, not quite centered yet. Let us sync them up so they're kind of like here. Yeah, yeah. So now you can see that they're they're maybe maybe we should move them a little bit further apart. So eight and like this. Yeah. So yeah, not, let's plug in those numbers. Let's plug in seven. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then let us not do any shot limits. So yes, you still see strobing. There's definitely still strobing happening, but because the bullets are bigger, they're, they're larger, so when they're moving at high speeds, there is more of an overlap between where the bullet was and where the bullet is in the next frame. You see more of a physical overlap between the bullets, between the individual frames. And that makes it easier for your eyes to track the, a very high speed movement. Whenever you're moving something at high speed, you want it to elongate it. You might make it physically big along the axis of movement that makes it easier for your eyes to track the bullet. And that's something that happens kind of automatically in movies when you have something called motion blur, where, you know, when you move a ball, for example, like you throw a ball and you film that with a camera with a long shutter speed, then that, that ball on a single frame, when you freeze the frame, that ball is no longer going to be a, a sphere. It's going to be like this smudged, blurred out streak in a direction of travel. That helps your eyes follow uh, the... Uh, the, the ball from one frame to another. It kind of like uh, emphasizes the speed at which the bullet is traveling. So that's cool. Now, if we increase the frequency, you still get that, you know, that wagon wheel effect. So we cannot shoot at a certain frequency, but you don't need that high frequency now anymore because the bullets are so long that this is actually too, too, they're too close together anyway, they're overlapping each other. And that's another advantage of having long bullets. You can lower the shooting frequency. You can just really lower it and you can still get like this thick shot coming out uh, because you don't need the, the close space. You don't need that density anymore because one bullet covers such a big area already. Okay, this was some theory about shots. This, I know we're going very slowly and I'm doing a lot of explanation. This is the stuff I learned from looking at, at, at different maps. Maybe you learn different things and let me know if you have, have ideas of how to make cooler shots. 
For now, let's move on to the doggy zone. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the doggy zone. Already the doggy zone because we have set up some things to, for you to try and I want you to try those things. I have an animation here actually and I want you to try this animation out. I want you to try out, uh, find a way of animating the individual bullets. Each bullet should go through this animation. If, if it's set up correctly, what you will, should get is like, make it seem like the bullet is spinning. I want you to do that. First challenge, second challenge, and maybe you already did that because I mentioned it in a previous, um, a previous doggy zone, but now for real, something that's really missing here is we really need that, um, muzzle flash. So I want you also sit down and try to create a muzzle flash animation when the bullets are leaving our ship. Yes, and this is also the moment where I will remind you, as always, that there is this show is supported by wonderful people on Coffee. Thank you so much to all the people supporting me on Coffee, supporting my work here. And if you aren't already, you can also become a supporter on Coffee. And as always, I say one of the perks is that you get to see the episodes earlier. I release them all in one 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 swoop on for the coffee supporters so you could watch the next episode in episode number nine immediately by becoming a supporter at coffee.com slash lazy deaths yes 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 so we are in the thick of it we are this is this is the real deal for me this is this is the, kind of the most important part of shmups and i know a lot of people will disagree it's like no you have to do the mechanics and so forth no the, the basics need to be like perfect they need to be like mm, and that's what we're gonna do and next episode we're gonna finalize this Doton party shot and then maybe we're gonna look at other options of doing different kinds of shots. Let's see. See you next time around guys. Bye bye.